G'day IB psychologist. You know, there's a common misconception that the most important thing about your IA is choosing the study that you're going to base your IA on. Actually, the most important choice you have to make is the best theory. The original study doesn't even really matter. It's the background theory or model that is really important for the IA. This is, gives you marks in the introduction and the evaluation. And it's really what everything in your IA is based on. So in this video, I want to approach the IA with a different tactic. Instead of looking at some recommended studies, that of course will be my next video I'm going to make. But instead of looking at those studies first, I'm actually going to suggest the best theories. Now, of course, these are the most commonly used and those that I've seen being used successfully. That's not to say there aren't other possible options. But anyway, let's get into it. The best theories for the IA. Right, the multi-store model. Now you'll need to remember uh, learn the multi-store model in your course anyway, right? The idea that we have sensory, short-term, long-term memory and the information travels between them. Uh, so it's not a bad choice and it can be a good choice to do for the IA. Peterson and Peterson with remembering trigrams is a good study to use. Now I uh, am hesitant to mention Glanzer and Kunitz, and I've been very careful to spell Kunitz right there. I misspelled that, um, unfortunately, on my blog uh, in a rather quote-unquote aggressive manner, as someone pointed out to me. Anyway, the uh, Glanzer and Kunitz can be done, but please look at my other posts and videos, which I'll put in the description about how to do this properly. It's filled with some pitfalls. But a nice, simple study is Peterson and Peterson testing durations of the short-term memory. All right. Number four, levels of processing. This is a, a theory you might not be familiar with uh, because it isn't covered in the course directly. Levels of processing suggest that the deeper we process information, the more likely we are to remember it. They posit there are three levels of proce processing. Semantic, which is making meaning of things. That's where I get the thematic and thematic education, by the way, is semantic and semantic processing and semantic memory. And there is structural and phonological. So phonological to do with sound, structural to do with uh, shape and size. And so if you uh, process things semantically, you're more likely to remember it. And if you teach things thematically, it can be helpful. So if you add thematic plus semantic, you get themant uh, thematic. Anyway, okay, so uh, handwriting versus typing notes can be a good study to use for this or the self-referent effect or different uh, styles of font on memory. Now, I'll link... Uh, the blog post where I have all of these studies outlined in the description. I would recommend, you, you can replicate the original level of processing study, but that has three conditions, semantic, structure, and phonological. So I would recommend only doing two of those conditions. Also, the most important level of processing to think about would be the semantic if you are looking at things like handwriting versus typing. Not all three of those levels of processing might be relevant to explain or to use the theory to explain the results of those studies. Schema theory. Now, if you are, if you really don't care what study you do, Bransford and Johnson, the laundry schema study is a fantastic one. I don't think it's the most fascinating study. It can be, it's, it's, um, quite commonly done, but it is perfect for the IA. It's nice, it's simple, it's straightforward, it connects beautifully to schema theory, and schema theory can explain the result because because schema theory can explain the results really uh, really well, really clearly. Another option would possibly be the waitress librarian study, uh, if you're familiar with this study, it can be done. I would not recommend doing the War of the Ghosts. There are too many. Uh, problems with this. It wasn't even, I mean, the original study is um, debatable whether or not it was even an experiment. There's no clear independent variable and figuring out what's the dependent variable can be tricky. There's just a lot of things wrong with the War of the Ghosts. And more often than not, actually, I've seen students do very poorly with this particular study. So if you want to do schema theory, I would go with Bransford and Johnson. By the way, if you have other good uh, studies that go with these theories, please put a note in the comments. I really like continually updating and adding to my list of studies uh, because I really like it when students can choose something that they're interested in. And a note on schema theory and actually your, your IA in general. So the best IAs are well-researched and properly cited. And what I mean by well-researched is I would recommend finding at least one journal article to cite for the description of your theory or to use a, a claim of that theory 
that links really nicely to your study. I'm not going to go through and do that research for you and nor should your teacher or nor will your teacher. And so I think it's, uh, but again, if you're aiming for a seven, that's the level of effort that I recommend putting into the AA. And it's not that much more work, actually, probably maybe 30 minutes or an hour, where you're going to find some original journal articles that talk about the theory that you're using and find a nice quote or an aspect of, uh, or a claim from that theory that you can cite that will link to your study. The dual processing model coming at number two. So the anchor effect is uh, is a very commonly done study now and it can be done quite well. And so, for example, a very common replication is uh, the starting with uh, one times two times three all the way up to eight. If you start with a one or if you start with the eight, right? Ascending or descending order. What's the difference in the estimations? The effort heuristic is one that uh, some of my students recently replicated effectively. Uh, and so, for example, they did it with a painting. One of my students had a painting that they had actually done for art class, and they told half their participants it took them two days to create, and then the other half that it took them two hours. I can't remember the exact time frames, but it was like that. And then we see which one is uh, which one leads to the higher uh, guess guess of what it's worth, or the guess of the value, or, or their appreciation that I can't. They had actually three different dependent variables, and I forget which one they chose as the one to end with. But anyway, more information in the description. Now, what I would recommend with the dual processing model here is a bit of word of caution. Describing the model is very easy. You simply talk about system one processing, system two processing, and you um, describe the five adjectives or, or a few adjectives for each, right? Fast, intuitive, logical, rational. However, using the model to explain the results of studies is much more difficult and requires careful thinking. And that's where you have to make the link between the theory or the model and your study. And you, you and you can make that link in a number of ways. Again, I'll put a link in the description to a video and a blog post where I explain how you can do it. But just quickly, one of the best ways to do it is to use the model or theory to explain the results of the study. All right, number one, the working memory model. Now, don't be turned off by the working memory model. If you're like me, when you first came across it many years ago, and the concept of working memory was just too abstract, and it, it uh, and then all the words, phonological loop, and visual spatial sketch pad, episodic buffer, the central executive, it can be quite overwhelming. But because you have to revise it for your course, it can actually be a great model to use, because if you're going to do it for the IA, you're going to understand it much better for the exams. Also, I tell my students, if they are um, if they're studying the cognitive approach, then they want to become an expert for the essays, I should say. They want to become an expert in the working memory model. If you're given a choice of what model to write about, I would go with this one because I think it allows you to show a deeper understanding uh, than the multi-store model, which is pretty basic. And also, most students will go with the multi-store model and give a very simplistic explanation. If you can do the working memory model, I think you have the potential to show uh, your understanding of a more complex and arguably difficult to understand model. Anyway, working memory model, I think great. You could use this for music and learning. Uh, that would be if you had lyrics versus no lyrics, right? Because that's now going to be, a, if you're um, trying to process some information like reading information and listening to lyrics, then you're, this is essentially a dual task paradigm study where you're maxing out your phonological loop so it's going to disrupt your working memory capacity, which is going to affect your um, retention. Okay, or you could even be doing uh, working memory tasks like the end back tasks or um, O span or digit span tasks. You can find these uh, working memory games online. Articulatory suppression is another type of study that could be used for this. This is when, if you're trying to learn a series of words and you and they're being flashed on the screen visually, but then you are being asked to speak or say something that's unrelated to those words at the same time, then this disrupts your, you know, it maxes out your working memory and it uh, affects your ability to recall. Now, here are some studies that I've recently come across in I'm researching and writing a new unit, which will be available soon, called Studying with Your Smartphone for the Cognitive Extension. And this is all about how cell phones uh, can cause distractions and might disrupt our working memory. And so actually, I replicated this experiment in my class and it was quite fun and it could make it for a good IA where you have students trying to do working memory tasks while they're receiving text messages and then you have them in a silence condition. This can also be linked to cognitive load theory 
and again this makes for a great study to, to use for the exams as well so um, I don't have that in the key studies list because these are this is some new re research I've done but if you do the HL extension and the studying with your smartphone unit then you'll see the studies there okay all right now the best theory is of any of those five I would say they're all equally capable and I've seen IA score I've just marked 200 IAs um, recently for during after the uh, for the IB and I would say any one of those theories has the potential to to score top marks I would recommend choosing the theory that you understand the best and that you can explain the results of the study you're, rep you're replicating. That is my recommendation for you. Now let's have a look at some honorable mentions, right? Color and context theory, I had some good IAs this year based on this. Uh, and so for example, looking at things in green font versus red font or the arousal mood hypothesis um, that was for the um, Mozart uh, for the Mozart effect could be used now having said that it's been very made very clear this year that I'll, I'll explain this in a moment that effects are not counted as theories or models anymore now the arousal mood hypothesis now I would say this is a theory maybe you're best to go with a theory that has the word theory or model in the title just to be safe Disfluency theory. So, if you're doing, say, the fortune favors the bold study, the different types of fonts on memory, disfluency theory can be quite useful. Or cognitive load theory, and this is linked to working memory. Now, this is a very tricky theory to to understand to begin with. So, I would only recommend doing this if you've studied the unit, um, the the HL extension, studying with your smartphone. Uh, again, which isn't available as I'm recording this, but it will be available shortly. So, hopefully, by the time you are watching this, it will be ready, and you would have studied it and you'll find it interesting and helpful now some dishonorable mentions any effect so these do not count as theories the Stroop effect misinformation effect and the Mozart effect and anything that ends with the word effect right the self-referent effect they used to be in 2019 2020 these were accepted as theories or models they were acceptable uh, for the IAs however this changed in this most recent examining uh, season so do be wary of this uh, you must um, use background theories okay alrighty there it is I hope that was helpful good luck uh, don't forget you've got the IA ebook which is available I'll put a link in the description you might want to send that to your teacher if you're a student watching this uh, and because there's also a teacher support pack which has workbooks and PowerPoint slides and all the things there that you need um, of course, we've got lots more things available on the store to subscribe to the blog and the channel. And if you've got questions, please leave a comment. If you found this helpful, please leave a comment. I do enjoy uh, reading comments from students around the world uh, who find these materials useful. All right. Thank you and good luck.